How does Stefan assess his strengths and weaknesses in your position today? How do you look at that? Because I guess you will factor that in how to make decisions. Yes. But what do you think are your best strengths and maybe on the contrary side, what, what are your weaknesses that you're aware of when you're working? Sure. So I'm not sure if you touched upon this in the interview with Matt, but we'll be very much inspired by the thought related to sort of the strengths finders concept in, in the US and all the markets talking and books, etc. And we didn't talk about it, so don't okay. be correct. So, so that's a way of assessing personality. And it's something that I've been spending a lot of time on because we really want to try to get to the core of what a talent really is. Um, there's a million and one different tools out there for assessing personality. You have your disk, your Briggs Myers, etc. All of those come back with usually sort of four letters, and, and people are mostly not surprised when they look at it. What we like is the strengths finders is that it has 34 different talents. Come back to you, start with 50 something talents. It comes back to you and says, these are the different things, the different traits or talents or strengths that are dominant in your personality. What I like about that is that the things that make you great are usually also the things that hold you back. Okay? So if I look at that introspectively about myself, the things that make me great is I think I'm quite a quick learner. I'm quite good at structuring things and breaking down into, into boxes. I'm quite good at being sort of very researchy, if you will, and really get into depth on things. Um, just to, just to get to, just to explain that last point, so you, you can easily sit down for five hours with one problem. You will not leave sure. the desk until yeah. Sure. But exactly. people, that's a rare skill because people are yeah. Not everyone can, has that. No, exactly. Yeah. Want. But my challenge is also that I sometimes do that when I should only spend two hours on it. Exactly. Right? So by being aware of this, I become better at managing myself because I know where my natural tendencies are. And I know that those are my strengths, which also makes it easy for me to accept them as my weaknesses because I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is what makes me great. But it also what really shows when I'm not at my best, yeah. which is going down the wrong thing, right? Yeah. So again, now we talked about before, this thing of just keep on going on a, on a, a separate topic, right? Yeah, yeah. But going down that rabbit hole. Well, the good thing about my personality is that I don't mind doing that and things. Yeah. I actually like it. I like to understand the sort of... 20th decimal of, of things, yeah. where other people just stop and say, well, it's about half. But it also means that sometimes I need to stop myself from doing that. Exactly. Because it might not be constructive, it might not give a positive ROI. Because er everyone has the same amount of hours, right? Bill Gates is famous for saying, I only have 24 hours as everyone else. So kind of like figure out what's the optimized way of using those hours. It's like maybe the, the hardest part of everyone's life, right? Yeah. And then finding people around me who are better at the things I'm not good at. Exactly. Um, so, so there's no doubt that that I think that's one of the reasons why I think our team works so well. We're yeah. really good at complementing each other exactly. in important ways. A, a, a great way of learning is, of course, books. So we need to spend some minutes talking about books. Can we start about how you sort of find books? Is it serendipity? Are you deliberate about what you want to learn? And then go from the process. But first, how do you find a book to read? What's sure. your book that, That's almost the science in itself. Okay. So I, I usually get, either it happens out of chance where I meet someone I respect and I believe their opinions are good and then I recommend the book and then I read it. Then the other way is I have a topic that I really want to go deep on. Then I do really thorough research. If I know someone is an expert in that field, I speak to them. I might combine that with looking at what are, if it's a course that's been taught in university, for example, I will find the syllabus of all the uh, for example, MIT, yeah, Harvard, yeah. Etc., depending on what schools are good in that topic. Exactly. And then I will see what are the common denominators in the books they choose. So most often you will find that there are certain books that are more popular than others. Yeah. And then I will read those. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I would get those and, and I would read from them. But, but most often I try to seek out people to understand yeah. the topic better. Because the next question is how do you read books? Because at least from, talk from my experience, I can never read a book just all the pages without taking notes and without stopping along the way. Because I find if I just read a book from A to Z, I like often forget it if I didn't take any notes or I didn't like summarize every chapter. But people are different here. Some people yeah. just like to write, uh, read the whole thing and just like make the mental models or whatever. But how do you when you start reading a book? I love it. Now, now we are hitting a, hitting a nerve here. Okay. Sure. So I, I do that in very different ways. I'm, I'm always reading books in three different formats. I have physical books, I have Kindle books, and I have audio books. So audiobooks are used for books where the details aren't as important, like memoirs or biographies. Or storytelling, yeah, biographies. Right. Exactly. I, I don't do fiction. I rather do, so at least if I do that on audiobooks, but it's one or two books a year. If I look at my Kindle, the amazing thing there is I use that often for the more sort of 
I call them airport books, your classical books where you have like 200 and 300 pages around a specific topic. Usually you could have boiled it down to 50, but for some reason it takes two or 300. Because they want to sell the book, right? Exactly. Uh, the beautiful part about doing it on a Kindle is that you could export your highlights. Exactly. And then I use that, I export that afterwards, and I use that to write my own summary of the book. I do that for two reasons. One, because I can go back and read it later on, so they to reread the book, but I do that to increase my memory of the book. And the second reason is the fact of writing actually helps me. I'll get back to the second, but it actually helps me memorize it better when I'm writing things down, even if I'm writing on the computer. The other way, which is my preferred option, is when I do physical books. I always do that with a pen and a highlighter next to me. Um, I like to browse through the book at first. Um, I have the, I use these flags, these posted flags. I put them in so only before I mark out all the chapters in the book. I told myself in the beginning it was just so I could quickly flip to the next chapter, but relative to what it does, it helps me build that learning tree because I now understand what are the building blocks. Yeah. Most books are built so that you have a natural progression from one chapter to the next, and it helps me understand that flow. Yeah. For example, yesterday when I built, started this new book on, on racing vehicle dynamics, which is around engines and tires and race cars, what I saw was there was this chapter on what's called the GG diagram. I was like, what's a GG diagram? I didn't know that. I'm very really good about it. But what I then saw in the intro chapter, it mentioned this GG diagram. I start to build the link. Okay. And given that it's quite far in the book, I start to understand, okay, it's quite a complex thing. But also, I did a bit of more reading, and I said, okay, that's actually the end goal of building a race car. Exactly. And then it started to put things, and again, it becomes a tree, where I can put more and more things on the different branches of the tree. Exactly. Do you like reading several books at a time? Like you can read 10 pages of one book and a Kindle is another book, but do you like to only focus on one or two books at a time, or do you like to just... Sure. I, I usually read three books at a time, because I use one for each format. Exactly, yeah. The reason for that being that the physical books I read are usually sort of university style books, so it's, it's an A4 format, and okay. it's hard to travel with. I can't open it on a tube, I can't really have it on a plane. Um, I have the audiobooks for commuting and traveling, because it's super convenient. Yeah. Going in and out of security in an airport, passports up, etc. You can't really do that with a book as easy as you can with an audiobook. At the same time, I like the Kindle when I'm flying, and I'm both blessed and cursed by having a lot of time flying. Um, so. With that, I can do that easily on my Kindle, and I have a long time to do that. It's a good music in my ears, and I kind of soak it yeah. the book. Yeah. Or my other favorite, which is before bedtime, the entire room is dark, and you have your Kindle book, and that's the only light you get, because then it's so focused, Okay. Uh, and it doesn't kill your... So before bedtime, you prefer Kindle, and not listening to your AirPods to listen to an audiobook? Or... Great. I really do not prefer to have audiobooks before going to bed. That kicks off my brain too much. Exactly. Can we recommend some books, favorite books ever, to the audience, if you want to have like top five, top ten, whatever, just oh, crossing through that's, your library? So Great Dali has to be one, of course, because you it, know, it, it is, it is. I think it's very influential on, on my thinking. Yeah. Um, I also like uh, Yuval Harari's Sapiens. Yeah. I like it because it's so fundamental in the way of thinking. Um, other books that have really influenced me are all the classics, like Seven Habits and those kind of books. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, it, it, it's so contextual. Exactly. It's very hard to recommend to a person who just joined us will be different from a person who's just looking to be uh, an expert on certain yeah. topics.